The exchange of molecules in AS biology is a really important concept. Things like oxygen or things moving into cells such as glucose or things that move into and out of the blood. The following thing, which is fixed law, if you use this, it will help you to answer questions related to exchange surfaces. You'll see as we go through the, the examples what I mean. So exchange surfaces will always have a or tend to have a large surface area, big difference in concentration, and a small diffusion distance. The really good exchange surfaces that have rapid diffusion will, ex will show all three, whereas some exchange surfaces may only have one or two of these adaptations. The exchange surfaces you need to know for Unit 1 is the lungs, so the alveoli, how oxygen gets into the blood, and the epithelial cells of the small intestine. The lungs, the alveoli, have many of the adaptations. So let's think about fixed law. First of all, surface area. They have a folded shape, which gives them a large surface area. As you can see, there are also many of them. So collectively, they provide a large surface area. The next is the difference in concentration. Because you're constantly breathing in oxygen-rich air, you're constantly keeping the concentration of oxygen this side high. Because blood is constantly travelling through the capillary, you've got blood flow, any oxygen present in the blood has been taken away, keeping the oxygen concentration low. So you've got a high difference in concentration, from a, so your oxygen will diffuse from a high to low concentration across the al thin alveoli wall and the thin capillary wall. That leads us into the last of the adaptations. There's a short diffusion distance. The one cell thick wall of the alveoli and the one cell thick wall of the capillary means that you've got a very thin diffusion distance, very short diffusion distance. So the alveoli and the lungs exhibit all three features of a good exchange system. If the question is stating what the structural features of the alveoli themselves, the only things you can mention are the folded alveoli wall and the thin walls of the, so the one cell thick walls, the short diffusion pathway of the alveoli walls. The fact that you've got ventilation and blood flow are not structural adaptations of the alveoli. They would be adaptations of the lungs as a whole. Here's a classic long answer question about um, alveoli, which just goes through what I've said. Epithelial cells in the small intestine, um, it's slightly different. The main adaptations of the actual cells themselves is that they've got microvilli. Okay, so they've got microvilli which increase the surface area. So that's the main way using fixed law that they're adapted. They've got a large surface area using the microvilli. Epithelial cells also have to absorb glucose against the concentration gradient. So to help them set up a situation where they can absorb glucose using a co-transporter, they need lots of mitochondria to provide energy, to provide ATP, to help absorb molecules through active transport. Again, similarly to the, um, what I said about the alveoli, the microvilli, and the microvilli and the mitochondria are the structural adaptations. But because the nutrients are flowing past the, in the lumen and you've got blood um, behind the epithelial cell, so you've got blood flow and flow of um, materials through the lumen of the small intestine, they help to maintain the concentration gradient, steep concentration gradient as well. Here's a long answer question. Uh, again, you can see um, where the marking points are. Exchange and transport is a huge part of unit 2 and there are many things that you're expected to use the fixed law equation for. First of all the idea about surface area to volume ratio so that as things get bigger the surface area to volume ratio decreases. So that would be a description of the relationship. This can affect all sorts of different things. So things that are very very small because they've got high surface area to volume ratio they can often get enough oxygen into their bodies by simple diffusion. Things that are much bigger have to have exchange surface, specialised exchange surfaces like lungs and gills, or they have to have a transport system 
or both. So a transport system like a blood system. Here's a question illustrating that. We've got to describe and explain. Fish gills are amazingly adapted for gas exchange. The reason being is the concentration of oxygen in water is far less than you find in air. So the fish has to be able to get enough oxygen into its blood. So let's think about fixed law again. Surface area. What provides a high surface area? We've got loads of these gill filaments. So lots and lots of gill filaments. And on each gill filament you've got many lamellae. And it's on the lamellae itself that the capillaries are found. So high surface area provided by many filaments and lamellae. Let's think about the concentration gradient. Well, the fish have the best method to main, maintain a high concentration gradient. They've got countercurrent flow. You've got blood, blood flowing in one direction and water flowing in the opposite direction. That always maintains a steep concentration gradient across the whole of the gills. Finally, the fact that you've got capillaries, which have a one-cell thick wall, provides a really short diffusion distance. So fish, really well adapted. Each part of fixed law is fulfilled. And here we can see that with the, a long answer question. Capillaries are where exchange happens. So you need to know how a capillary is adapted for exchange. First of all, the walls themselves, the wall of the capillary, the endothelium, is really, really thin. It's one cell thick, you've got squamous epithelium. So very, very flattened cells, very, very short diffusion pathway across the epithelial wall. You've also got a narrow lumen. So the narrow lumen slows down the speed of blood flow. So you've got more time for diffusion to take place. And the fact that your red blood cells are pressed up right against the, uh, the epithelial wall reduces the diffusion distance. And you can see those adaptations in this long answer question. Marking point one, however, refers to the idea that you've got gaps in between the, the epithelial cells, allowing tissue fluid to escape, which helps in the exchange process. Root hair cells, those that are found in the roots of a plant, not on the top of your head. The root hair cells found in plants are adapted using fixed law by having a large surface area. So the root hair provides a large surface area for a root hair cell. Another structural adaptation not using fixed law is they also have to take up ions from a low to a high concentration, so against the concentration gradient. As a result, there are lots of mitochondria to provide enough energy for that process. Insects can never grow beyond about the size of the, your hand. The reason being is they do not have a particularly well adapted um, gas exchange system. They also struggle with water loss. The only real way that insects are adapted for exchange is making the most of a maintaining a high concentration gradient. The fact that the muscles are carrying out respiration keeps the concentration of oxygen low inside the insect. So air will move from so oxygen will move from a high concentration in the air to a low concentration next to the muscles. Through the pore into the insect, which is a spiracle through the trachea system, through the tracheae, and then down through the tracheoles to the muscle cells themselves, where the oxygen will diffuse into the muscle cells. As you can see from this graph here, spiracles and insects are closed most of the time. So spiracles and insects are closed most of the time, reason being is to reduce water loss. Any organism that lives on land is going to struggle with conserving water. So it closes the spiracles to reduce water loss. It's only when the carbon dioxide levels reach a certain point that the spiracles open to allow the carbon dioxide to diffuse out. And this allows more oxygen to diffuse into the insect. You can see it's not the levels of oxygen that cause the spiracles to open because it's leveled off before the spiracles open. Here's your long answer question for how insects can obtain oxygen. Leaves again, the exchange surface for gases in a plant. Not massively adapted, but then they don't need to be massively adapted for gas exchange because they're not particularly metabolically active. The site of a gas exchange is through the uh, stomata. 
and it's the guard cells that open and close the stomata. So when the plant has plenty of water, the stomata will be open. Things like high light intensity will also cause the stomata to open. So carbon dioxide can diffuse down its concentration gradient, so they've got high concentration of carbon dioxide in, outside the leaf in the air. So high concentration of carbon dioxide diffuses through the stomata, down its concentration gradient, through the air spaces, till it, till it reaches the palisade cells, where it can be used in photosynthesis. The diameter of a trunk of a tree uh, can also be related to gas exchange. During midday, so that would be noon on here, the diameter of the tree is smallest, so it gets thinner, the tree trunk gets thinner during the day. So when the rates of transpiration are the highest, when water's leaving through the stomata, um, that's when, at the fastest rate, that's when the diameter of the tree trunk will be uh, thinnest. Times at night, when the tree trunk is fattest, that will mean that rates of transpiration are least. There's not much water leaving through the leaves. And that, this all links in with the cohesion tension. Um, so as more transpiration happens, more evaporation from the leaf, it's pulling more water behind it through the continuous column up through the xylem. That creates tension, which is causing the diameter to shrink. Xerophytes um, can exploit a fixed law to reduce the amount of water loss. So it's still kind of exchange, uh, but can reduce the amount of water loss. So for example, uh, sunken stomata, hairy leaves, rolled up leaves will cause a reduction in the water potential gradient. So that's reducing the water potential gradient, reducing the rate of osmosis, of water loss out through the leaf of, through evaporation. Interestingly, you can use fixed law, and I would always use fixed law if you get some weird, wacky cell organism that you have to say how it's adapted to have a high rate of diffusion. So, for example, here we've got a flatworm. How is it adapted to have efficient gas exchange? Well, it's got a thin, thin body, it's got a short diffusion distance. You've also got a large surface area to volume ratio because it's thin. So that's two ways you can use fixed law, how it's adapted to have a, a really efficient gas exchange system. Similarly, red blood cells, how are they adapted? Well, they've got a biconcave disc, so it's concave on both sides, which increases the surface area for diffusion. You've also got, they're thinner, because they're biconcave, they're thinner in the middle, so you've got a shorter distance for diffusion. So two ways of using fixed law, which make red blood cells Good at their job.